Hey, this is new, new channel. This is going to give me the opportunity to deep dive into anything e-bike related that I can't do on my existing channel because um, that's more video based. This is going to be audio based so you can watch it and I'll bring up the websites and stuff that I found that I'm talking about or you can just listen to it on podcast app, um, iTunes store, a podcast, Google Play, all that good stuff, SoundCloud, Spotify. So every week I'm going to be bringing stuff out and it might be 15 minutes, it might be half hour, might even be one hour, all depends. Um, It's going to be totally raw, there's going to be no editing, it's just me chatting crap for an hour. And um, also I thought it'd be a really good opportunity for me to answer questions because I do get a lot of people email me and unfortunately I forget to reply to some of them because it might be a different time that I see it and I just don't respond and that's not because I can't be bothered it's just because I forget but I thought it'd be a good opportunity to pull out people's questions here so if you want to send me a question send it to rob at emtbforums.com and um, I will do my best to answer it on this show here right what has happened this week that I thought was quite interesting? Let's take a quick look because there's a couple of new bikes that I saw. The first one was um, Yamaha and I saw this on um, Electric, which is a um, EV website for all kinds of electric vehicles. Anyway, it looks like Yamaha are going to bring out um, their own full suspension electric mountain bike now um, obviously they are no stranger to e-bikes they've made uh, motors they've made the Yamaha um, I think it's a PWX motor and now they've got a new version which is a PWX2 but now they've got um, their own e-bike their own electric mountain bike and electric is saying that um The full suspension electric mountain bike features a split down tube to hide the battery inside the frame. So nothing new there. Its long travel suspension suggests the bike is designed for more intense trails, including jumps, while its steeper rake angle implies that it might even earn some downhill credibility as well. Um... Now, according to Yamaha, they've said the e-bike was designed with the looks of a race machine riding out on the track. Its mass centralised chassis is suggestive of the engineering approach with a YZ series of competition motocross models. And they say that they're locating the chassis weight near the centre for increased handling performance. The bike provides stable cornering performance and light handling, even on rough terrain, And the simple lightweight frame was designed to show its relationship with YZ series models. I mean, from the picture, um, let me tell you that this is, um, it's an interesting looking, I mean, the bike looks traditional, but the paint on it looks pretty out there. It looks like, yeah, I mean, it looks like it's taken some design cues from their motocross stuff, those kind of classic Um, anodized blue rims now what's really interesting about this bike is it looks like it's got upside down forks on it Um, so absolutely no idea how it work but it I don't know it just looks like see if we can zoom in there a little bit looks yeah it looks like it's got upside down forks on so it looks like instead of the stanchions being at the top the the bottom of it actually slides up much like most mountain bikes sorry most um motorbikes do now and i think that is supposed to reduce the unsprung weight so you've got less um weight under the suspension but who knows who knows what they're going to do and i did see a load of people on emtb forums are kind of um just mentioning about the looks and this this guy said oh god it's barbie yamaha this time and then there's loads of people that have bought up motorbikes and just to kind of compare it to but it's interesting isn't it because if you think that um they make motors already which has got to be the more complex thing to make hasn't it compared to really a, a bike frame is you know arguably it's quite complex but it's just a series of shapes and triangles and geometry really and then you've got to manufacture the the tubing and make molds if it's carbon but 
I think that for someone like Yamaha, it should be pretty easy for them to bring out an absolutely banging e-mountain bike because they can manufacture the motor and the frame as one. And I know some of the manufacturers kind of do that at the moment, like specialised with Brose motor um, and... They bought out their Creo road bike recently, didn't they? That's got a apparently their own motor, but it's not. It's a it's a motor from a brand called Marle, who um, are massive in the automotive industry. But if you imagine if you're if you're manufacturing the motor and the frame and and you know maybe some more of the components, you can potentially make a, an absolutely amazing e bike. Um, and that reminded me also of the Grape bike now. Grape don't manufacture the motor, but they make all of the software on their bike. And, you know, arguably the frame, um, it's all carbon, but it's it's not quite there yet in terms of the geometry, in terms of what a someone that's experienced in maybe trail or downhill riding might want. The software that they've got on their bike is, is pretty awesome. And, and let's be honest, I think it takes much more expertise to write software um, and engineer software than it does to, and I might be talking way out of whack here, but I think that requires quite a lot of experience and development compared to maybe um, making a frame. Because to get experienced software engineers is really, really difficult. And, you know, to get experienced frame designers is also really difficult. But I remember looking at the Grape bike and thinking, damn, you know, they could accelerate their hardware game probably quicker than another bike manufacturer could accelerate their software game. And I think that in the future, the bikes that we are riding are going to be separated by software. Because there's only far, so far that you can take hardware, right? It's There's going to be millimetres here, millimetres there. We'll reach this kind of point where it's marginal gains. But I think on the software side, that's where there's a massive opportunity for bike manufacturers to really open up here and explore and invest in this area. And that's what Grape are doing. You know, you might think right now it just looks a bit crazy, Um and it does, you know, they're bringing in their gamification, that kind of stuff to their bikes where you can race other people. You can see what other people are doing. But there's really cool things in there like the tracking, the GPS tracking, because I think I don't know about you guys, but I think that um, the tracking is a massively needed part to e-bikes right now or any any bikes, because there is so much stuff getting stolen Like so many e-bikes are getting stolen and it absolutely sucks. You know, these bikes are worth 3,000, 4,000, anything up to 10,000 pounds. And that's more than the car, really. You know, when you tell people how much a bike is worth there, well, most people I speak to are blown away that we would spend that kind of money, think we're crazy. And then in a lot of the times it is... It is worth more than a, a car, a Ford Fiesta, for example. Um, it's not that much to buy, is it? It's not as much as £10,000. So why aren't we getting these bikes now with all of this tracking tech built in, at least the tracking tech, like a GPS? Some of them are. So like I said, the Grape um, G6 bike has has got the uh, anti anti-theft stuff built into it and actually there was a story at Eurobike they told me and this is quite funny one of their demo bikes got stolen from one of the shows that they did they did a massive road show this year and um, one of the bikes that they took got stolen and they tried to track it they didn't really think much of it because it went a bit cold for a week or so and then about I think it was three months later they were um, just doing some uh, stuff research back at their lab and they decided to try and track the bike again. And they they managed to see where it was. They managed to find out exactly where it was and they could activate the cameras and they recorded as well. Opens a whole new can of worms into GDPR and data protection and, and all that stuff, but I'm sure that can all be worked out. But they managed to track exactly where the bike was 
records some audio of the guy's grandma, I believe, and took it to the police. And the police were like, how the hell did you do all this? Anyway, you know, that's what I'm talking about in terms of software. And the Grape G6 has that built in, as do other bikes like High Bike um, have their eConnect. And High Bike's eConnect system does loads of other stuff and does that as well. And, you know, you might think that software, you don't want your bike to be a computer. You just want it to ride like a bike. And I agree, a, a lot of us want it to ride just like a regular bike. But wouldn't it be cool if much like your mobile phone that you can see exactly where your bike is at any one time? Like, I would love to know if my bike's moved by somebody and it alert me. We've got it everywhere. You can even get damn doorbells that alert you when your um, doorbell is being rung or where, when someone stands in front of your door. So why can't we get a 10 grand bike to do it? Well, you can. There's There's stuff that you can buy. I was just checking out um, this GPS bike tracker that I saw at Eurobike. Now, this is by a company called Pow Unity, and um, they're saying GPS tracker for e-bikes. Thieves hate us. Bikers love us. Now, it's 199 euro, I think, and it goes into Bosch, Bros, Yamaha, and Shimano bikes, and. Um, much like I think the grape thing, it just alerts you when when your bike's moved. Um, the invisible placement of the GPS tracker in the engine case of your e-bike will not let potential thieves know that the they can now be tracked to the meter when stealing a bicycle. So it goes in. It's got a backup battery as well. That's one of the things that I wanted to check because if they uh, if a thief just removes the battery if they can work it out, then um, you would assume that the GPS tracker stops. But these have got actual dedicated batteries to them and they last for, uh, it's obviously some time. But, you know, that's €199. Euro. And then I was looking around for stolen bikes uh, just to see what had been reported. And I know that on the EMTB forums, on the Facebook group, EMTB forums Facebook group, and there's a few other Facebook groups that I'm a member of, it's so every couple of weeks that you might see a shop's been broken into or someone's had their bike nicked and it is so shit that these bikes are getting stolen and very rarely do I see them being recovered because theft, bike theft is sadly um, much, much easier to get away with than, for example, a car theft. A car has a registration number, it has a VIN, a vehicle identification number, and um, a bike has none of that, really. I mean, it's got a serial number, but there's no like centralised database like there is with a DVLA that everything's registered to. And, you know, if you can nick a four grand Fiesta or a 10 grand bike that you can just wheel away and no one's going to know, what are you going to go for? So I was looking around and then I noticed on single track, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, they actually got robbed pretty much it's, it's absolutely disgusting that um i think it was a couple of people in a balaclava um a black estate car pulls up onto the pavement it pulls up pretty fast and pretty close and a few of us are watching suck our teeth in in a bloody hell that's a bit of a cavalier kind of way and then the car reverses back reverses back and they think that they're gonna go to the takeaway because there's a takeaway shop next door um, and then a guy in a balaclava gets out and takes bikes. Crazy. Nicks the bikes, basically, in an estate car, two bikes hanging off the side. And this is um, the guys and girls that work at Single Track's actual bike. But anyway, I mean, that's that's it's so shit that this is happening. And um, I do hope they get their bikes back. But we need to do so. I think the the bike industry need to do something about it. We as consumers need to um, keep pressure in the bike industry and, and I don't know, the police or whatever we can do just to stop this crap from happening because it is devastating. I've had two bikes stolen, not e-bikes, but nonetheless, it's still something that you 
get a lot out of you enjoy you ride you might customize even if it's just stickers that you put on it it's 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 your own isn't it and for that to be ripped out of your hands or taken from your shed it's just um it absolutely sucks we got to do something about it um what else did i say oh yeah i saw that gt have got a couple of new e-bikes um I didn't actually get any of the press releases for this one. Now, they've got out the GT Force Amp, which is a Shimano-based 29er. Um, Shimano E8000 motor. 150mm travel, internal battery. It'll probably have the 500 watt hour internal battery that nearly all of the Shimano bikes are coming with at the moment. And... Um, yeah, it's the BT8035 internal battery. And I saw that. I thought that looks quite neat. And I think they've bought out two. I think they've got the Force Amp and the Force Current. Pedal assist electric bikes. Um, so they're saying, join the e-bike revolution and discover how many more trails you can grind your way up. How many out of the way hole in the wall places you can visit and just how awesomely not exhausting a full day in the saddle can really be. And they've come out with the most cheesy, cheesy um, marketing. I don't know who did this, but so much fun. It should be illegal. They really went with that. <laughs> so much fun it should be illegal that pun in that marketing slogan should be illegal in fact it is one of the cheesiest um pieces of marketing i've read and actually sorry gt but i'm sure the bike's really really good but the website's not really that good um yeah it's i mean who cares is a bike website but it could be a lot better because i can only see two or three pictures of the bike actually so oh no there's a video there's a geo chart there's a video um no there's not it doesn't appear when you click the video gt you need to sort your website out there's no reviews no video there's a geo chart that looks like it's done in font sized four so you need to actually like i don't know print it out or something um but it looks all right, actually. It looks all right. Shimano Motor's been around for a while now. There's nothing particularly groundbreaking on it. Um, alloy, 500 watt battery, internal. There's been loads, isn't there? Loads of e-bikes have come out this summer. This is this is the summer where, or this is this has been the year for the e-bike where the frame designers have actually needed to have put some work into the design of the frame. Because you can't just whack a battery on a frame now and it'd be okay. In fact, they're starting to look a little bit dated. Now, here's the thing. Like, Vitus have bought out their 2020 range and it's the third year that that bike has been available. They've not made any changes other than paint and spec changes. But I just want to show you this one because the Vitus eSummit VR is one of the best handling e-bikes i've ever ridden it's pretty lightweight it's under i think it's under 22 kilograms like 21 maybe 170 mil travel on the front 160 mil on the rear and i reckon that this is going to be the last of that type of bike and um, a lot of people do ask me what bike i would recommend and the Vitus e Sommer is always one of them, but what it doesn't have is it doesn't have an internal battery. In fact, most e-bikes now, or in fact all of them, I'm pretty certain like all of the e-bikes that have come out now have an internal battery in them, whereas Vitus um, haven't. They are still banging it on the frame. I think Merida were the last ones really that were quite big. They had the battery on the frame. Um, and Vitus still have. Now, the thing with this is, I mean, the colours are a bit all over the place. They've got one that's called, I think it's, um, is it like Hawaiian Fade or something or Malibu Sunset? I don't know. Probably looks much nicer in the flesh. But the interesting thing with this bike is that 
it handles so, so well. And because the battery, anytime you make a frame that has, uh, hasn't got an internal battery, they tend to be lighter because they've just pretty much taken a regular frame and bolted on a battery onto it. So they haven't had to make the frame beefier. They haven't had to hollow it out and put loads of reinforcement in it. But when they do, it'll be interesting to find out how their new bike handles, if if they ever do that is, because when you when you make an e-bike suitable to have a battery um, put internally into the frame, you change the weight distribution, you tend to make it higher because you've got to stretch the battery out. You make that frame heavier. So in this weird kind of world that we're in, the consumer, and I like an internal battery, the consumers are demanding internal batteries, but it's making for heavier, more expensive bikes and arguably bikes that don't handle quite as well. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do with this um, Vitus because it's still the price has gone up slightly, um, but it's still pretty good value for money. And um, it's got an internal battery. And actually, just reading this post here from Rocket Magnet on EMTB forums, he said, in my opinion, the only benefits to internal batteries are aesthetics, arguably. And the larger batteries available on some internal bikes. For better and worse, EMTBs has opened up the mountain bike market to more people. And we can't expect them all to put performance before aesthetics. Yes, you can have both, but so far internal batteries are generally a compromise. The biggest issue Vitus now have is these bikes, although still good value, are not the no-brainer they were in 2018 or 2019. With the trend towards internal and all the marketing implying that it's better somehow, then it may be a tougher sell this year. Personally, I'd rather have the charger run slow from 80 to 100 to protect the life of the battery. Um, what is most desirable is a smaller light charger for those carrying it around. And he's talking a bit about the charger. But he's got a really, really good point. The Vitus was pretty much a no-brainer because there wasn't really any, or there weren't many e-bikes with internal batteries. It's probably only the Levo and it was much, much more expensive. But over the past 18 months, pretty much every bike now is coming with an internal battery. And that's driven really by aesthetics. And, you know, what Rocket Magnet's saying is that there's no real benefits to it other than it looking better. And, you know, I'm a sucker for that looking better bike, but... The compromise is that you you can reduce the effectiveness of its handling. So it'll be interesting to see what they do next year. Right, I think that is going to be it for this first show. Let me know if this is something that you want to see because I've got so much stuff that I want to talk about from motors to warranties to... Um, real deep dive into some of the tech and I want to um, get some answers from some of the manufacturers and some of the designers into some of our questions. So if this is something that you think I should continue away from my main channel and you like this kind of format and you like the podcast kind of style, let me know because it's something that I um, I can do. It's quite raw. It's much easier to edit. It's There's no editing, basically. It's just me talking for a long time. And let me know if you want to see more. All right, I'll catch up with you soon.